Hello, so previously we have already added OmniAuth, Google Authentication, Facebook and GitHub and now let's try doing the same with Microsoft. So we are going to add this kind of fancy sign in the Microsoft button to our application. And first place I would go would be to go and see the gem uh, OmniAuth and uh, see which uh, sub gems there are for different types of OmniAuth solutions. So I go to this community maintained list and look for Microsoft. And I see that there are actually a few different solutions. And my first problem was understanding which one works best. So the one that worked for me was this OmniAuth Azure Active Directory version 2. So let's try adding it to a Ruby on Rails application. I'm going to get the gem and I'm going to add it to a new Ruby on Rails app that I've created. Now actually in this app I already have installed the gem device, I already have device for user and I have two static pages. One that doesn't require authentication and one that does. Okay, so I've uh, added this gem and uh, I will also definitely need to add the gem uh, Rails uh, OmniAuth as SFR protection. Let's see. Gem Rails OmniAuth as uh, uh, protection. Whatever the name is. Yeah, so OmniAuth Rails CSFR protection to be able to make uh, requests, okay? So this gem is actually, uh, as of OmniAuth version 2, so for the last couple of years, uh, required for any OmniAuth to work with the uh, Rails. Okay, so let's run bundle. And now I'm going to see. So here I need to add the client ID and client secret. And where can I get them? Now, usually the hardest thing for me in adding OmniAuth is actually getting this uh, API keys from different providers. So here I have already created a Microsoft Azure account and I have connected my credit card and I was given around like $200 uh, uh, credit and uh, it was given for around uh, 12 months. But uh, I think this app registration that we are going to use doesn't require actually any payments. So yeah, we're going to use app registrations. If you don't see it by default in the dashboard, you can just type app registration and open it up. And here we are going to create a new registration. So let's create an application, let's say Super Rails, OmniAuth, or whatever you would like. And we have to select which types of accounts. So for example, you want only accounts within your organization to be logged in. So you would select single tenant. Or if you want uh, different organization accounts, so no personal accounts. For example, you're building a B2B application and you don't want anybody to be using their personal accounts. But you want other organizations except yours to have access. So you would select this multi-tenant. And if you want like any type of account, so only like organizations, your own organization, personal accounts, then you can select this one. Or this one would be only for B2C clients. So like not organizational accounts, only personal accounts. So this option here is the widest range and I'm going to select it. And I would need to select a platform. So I'm going to select a platform web. Roman Rails is like web application development. And for localhost, I'm going to say HTTP localhost 3000 slash users auth then Azure Active Directory uh, version 2 slash callback. So uh, this Azure Active Directory version 2 is uh, actually like this name of the gem and uh, it uses this uh, name here. So Azure Active Directory version 2. Okay, so I'm going to register. And here I've created the application. I have this application client ID. So it is going to be this client ID and we also need a client secret. So uh, where are we going to add these keys? We are going to add them inside the device gem. So if we go to device RB, let's go and look here. Yeah, here we have the OmniAuth. We have an example with GitHub and I'm going to use uh, not GitHub, but uh, Azure Active Directory version two. And I'm going to have app ID, app secret. We don't need the scope. And let's define app ID equals and we already have this app ID here. So I'm going to copy it. So this application client ID is the app ID that we are going to need. And we are also going to have to define app secret. And we are going to generate a secret key. So I'm going to go to certificates and secrets, new client secret, uh, my key, whatever. Let's select uh, the longest range. 
add the key. Okay, and we are going to have to copy the value, not the ID, but the value of the key. Okay, and uh, I paste it here. Okay, so we've configured this part. Now, obviously, in a real Ruby on Rails application, you shouldn't be just pasting the keys around like this. You would want to use the Rails credentials, but we are not going to focus on this in this example. Okay, so we've got the keys. Now we are going to go to user.rb and we're going to say omni authable and omni auth providers will be. We're going to include only this Azure Active Directory one. Okay, now if we restart the Rails server, Rails S. Okay, we got some kind of error. Let's see. Uh, wrong number of arguments. Let's see. So going back, we should define so client ID equals app ID and client secret equals app secret. Okay, let's see if it works. Rails server. Okay, the server has been started. Let's go to localhost, go to login, and we have this button, sign in with Azure Active Directory version 2. It has been added because we've added the, this uh, OmniAuth strategy to our users model. Let's try clicking on this button, and where does it bring us? So we are redirected somewhere, yeah, to Microsoft, and you see we actually, our app is real, the client ID is worked, so we have uh, like, I've already logged in with this email address, so I can use this email address. I click yes. And uh, let's see where it brings us. So the action hasn't been defined, defined in the OmniAuth callback controller. So we are going to need to add this device OmniAuth callback controller inside our Rails application. So we've actually already done all the hard work with uh, Azure, and we now just need to add the regular uh, OAuth flow for our users model. So I'm going to start by going to our roots and we'll have device for users, controllers, OmniAuth callbacks, users, OmniAuth callbacks. Yeah, you see, uh, GitHub Copilot saved me a few seconds. And now I'm going to go to our controllers. Inside, I'll create a folder users. Inside, I will create a file, OmniAuth callbacks controller dot rb here i will say class users omni auth callbacks controller that uh, inherits from uh, device omni auth callbacks controller and the action's name is going to be azure active directory version 2 so let's define the action and let's try putting a binding inside so let's say debugger and see if we hit this action. Let me submit once again. Okay, could not authenticate because invalid credentials. Let's try once again. Continue. Okay, and you see we've hit this debugger. So we are inside. And we can try getting request. Uh, Request.env. And let's get omniauth.auth. Uh, uh, yeah, I typed NF not correctly. E and V. Okay, so yeah, we've got this uh, authentication hash. Looks good. Let's quit. Start the server once again. And uh, let's try the code to actually authenticate the user. Now uh, we are going to say data equals request.env omni auth auth, and we are going to get the info from the data. Then we are going to find the user. So we're going to try to find a user by this data email. And uh, if the user exists, so I will say we will either find the user or create the user by the email. And uh, we are going to set the password for the device password. And uh, if the user has uh, been created, so if we either find or create the user, we are going to sign in and redirect. So we will say if at user.persisted, we are going to uh, sign in and redirect. Okay, so Copilot has generated some code, but some of it is uh, not looking good. So I will say, I'll remove this and I will say flash uh, 
uh, notice equals uh, success and here flash notice equals failure. Okay, let's see if this code works. So we are going to either find the user or we are going to create the user. Let's uh, see. I will go back. Now I'm, let me just check. Yeah, I have removed the debugger. Okay, let me go back. I will uh, click sign in. Continue. And you see, I have signed in, so it works. Let me try once again. I will cancel my account. So I've destroyed the user. Let me just go to the console and check. Uh, so let's say user.count, so no users. I'm going to click log in, sign in with Azure. Continue. And you see, I have signed in. Let me see, users count, user dot first. So yeah, I have successfully signed in with uh, my Azure account. Works well. And just for additional data collection, we want to know that uh, the user signed in via Azure and his Azure ID. So let's uh, also store this in our application so that we can define uh, how the user actually uh, signed up. So I will say Rails generate migration add uh, omni auth params to users, UID, and provider. So I'm going to add these two fields to the user model. I will say Rails DB migrate. And uh, if we are creating the user here, let's also uh, store the UID and the provider. So I will say uh, UID and uh, yeah, we'll have maybe data UID and provider equals data provider. Let's see if we store these. So I will start the Rails server once again. I will uh, delete the user. I will uh, sign up once again. And we have signed up. Let's see if we have stored the UID and provider. Let's say user.first. Uh, yeah, UID and provider have not have been stored. So you see, GitHub Copilot failed us a bit. We will uh, get uh, request and omni auth auth and uh, UID and provider. I think it should be the right way. So it is not in info, it is like separate. Let's uh, try once again. I will uh, again delete my account. I will log in. Okay, let's check now. So user first, and you see the UID has been saved and the provider has also been saved. So that's about it. And just one final thing, if you want to use this kind of application in production, you will need to add some additional data. So you will have to add your homepage URL, terms of service, privacy statement. You will need to add a publisher domain, meaning uh, most likely you will want to use uh, not your personal account, but like a registered Microsoft account for your domain. And uh, it would also be nice to add this MPN ID. So you would need to sign up as a verified publisher. That way users will trust you more and will be more likely to actually log in with their Microsoft accounts and trust your application. So yes, this is about uh, it. Thanks for being with me and see you in the next one.